So thank you for joining Vibe Osmosis. Go ahead and introduce yourself today. And what's your favorite caller? My favorite what? Your favorite caller. My favorite caller. Yeah. Uh, like, caller. yeah, your favorite caller. Yeah. And what about black you think resonates with you? Is it the uh, absoluteness or is it like the, uh, you know, the tie to space and um, how it can be, you know, paired with anything? Um, is, uh, your happiest place on earth right now? Okay, if you had a trash can, like one of those tin trash cans, and you and you were a homeless person, what would be like the first thing that you'd put into that trash can to burn it for warmth? And here, here's also a really essential question: and who would, who do you think would play you? in a movie version about your life. Oh, I think I think uh, Keanu Reeves is is my go-to for Batman. Like if 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 they do another Batman and it's like not with Robert Pattinson at this point, it's like yeah, get Keanu in there. He won't disappoint us, I think. Keanu, do you have like a favorite movie right now? I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Like, I uh, actually, whenever I was younger, I seen the first Blade Runner before they even talked about having, a, a, like, a, a revival. And, and did did you ever see the uh, old ones before you saw the newer one? Or did, were you kind of just getting into it? One thing I'd love to bring up is uh, I got into the RoboCop novel, um, and it has, like, a lot of that dystopian kind of, of feel. Um, and, and also, I don't know, with, with that movie, too, do you, like, want to follow it up with, like, what influenced you to uh, to say that, too, with, like, Blade Runner?
And I wanted to get into your YSO's um, like deep cuts. Um, like like what brought you um, to kind of showing you know this this other side uh, per se of like your music taste. And all right, and with your music, um, like like do you like do you make music on the side, or are you just like into the mixing aspect or the processing? Um, have you like ever made music or like took any lessons or anything like? So I've mostly, like, kind of produced for a while, um, because, like, there's, like, this kind of music I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. So, um, yeah, and, and then, like, in school, I was kind of stuck with, like, this one kid, Paul, and, like, I was kind of stuck, and his money definitely played a part in me DJing more and producing music. But, um, totally understandable. Uh, for for me personally, um, like it, it's it's at this point it's like um, doing chores. It's like it's it's inevitably or in inevitable uh, for me, you know, to to get down to it. It's like I like I know it's there. Like I hear like you know these different influences, and then it's like it's just a matter of whenever I can finally sit down to either start working on a new song. Or, like, whenever I finally get to go out and get live and, like, turn up the noise and, and like, get to, you know, dive in that realm. Uh, I feel like either either way, so even if you're, like, a headphone artist, I feel like there's some 
therapy behind it, just like whenever you're getting to spin a record and, um, you know, taking the dive to uh, work on, like, mixing and spinning music, um, I, uh, which kind of brings me into uh, my next question is, like, how long have you been, you know, um, into DJing and, um, you know, doing your own mixes and, and um, getting involved in that kind of other scene? Now, with with one thing I love to bring up too is like with with my experience, um, like seeing, like what I thought was DJing, or like what I thought was DJing was totally not what I what not what I like what I knew, or like not what I you know expected. And um, so like whenever I was younger, and I could see like my friends making music, and like having it up on their on their uh, turntables, and like having it up on their laptop. And, like, them, like, actually working on, like, a mixer board and, like, you know, playing stuff through the speakers. I was just like, whoa, you know, like, in a way, you know, like, like, in, uh, well, with some of my friends, they definitely only, like, showed you their samples or only showed you, like, what song, like, what, like, they would make songs and then they would, like, DJ out, like, what they made through, like, Serato or something, and 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 it really did blow my mind whenever they would get on these other people that would you know be incorporating maybe their sound and with like other other people like we know like James Brown or or whatever you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, like so I was I was gonna get into like did you ever kind of come through like an experience like maybe like Pretty Lights where they're just like they're making a beat too but also throwing in like with. Um, like what other kind of music they've been listening to or do you kind of like to g yeah yeah exactly that's that's one of the aspects i feel like is is a hidden gem about um djing was um getting into all this i would like have my friends over and we would take acid and then um i would like have my laptop out and i would plug in my pa speakers and i'd have ableton open i start making a beat 
And then, you know, I'd start adding in all the elements to a song and then I'd get out the microphone and then I'd start like talking into the microphone, but like talking to them. And then I add like, <laughs> and then I add like post processing to my voice, like reverb and delay, make it all trippy and like pitch it down and shit. <laughs> and I'd like trip them out and stuff. And they'd be like, whoa, you're doing all this right now. <laughs> It was like, yeah, I'm DJ Barry, and I'm. Or do you have like a different DJ name? Sorry. No, no, you're cool. No, I um, I don't have a uh, stage name. I've always just gone by Barry Leonard. Um, uh, I think part of that's because like I've never really had like, like you know, I've never really gotten in producing music or anything. So like, I'm mostly just a DJ, you know, just playing records. Okay, so what's your astrological sign? Uh, Libra. And do you identify as Libra? Do you feel the Libra vibes? Uh, I mean, I've had some, like, when people talk about, like, what makes a Libra, I've, like, related to some of those things. But I don't really consider myself, like, an astrological person or, like, a uh, like a religious type person in any of the sense, like, a spiritual type person. I'm pretty uh, neutral with that stuff. I, I get the stigma for spirit navigators. Everyone thinks like uh, I'm like a, a church cult leader or something. <laughs> They're like, is that is that a church band? <laughs> um, so I, I one of my uh, favorite favorite questions. So like, um, you know, how long have you been uh, recording? You know, your mixes. And um, like, what kind of driven to like driven you to it? Like, any kind of like bands, inspirations, and um, you know, like, what kind of put you on this uh, path that you chose um, to kind of lay down? You know, spreading to me, it's like spreading the word of other uh, of other good music. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it sounds so corny now but like skrillex was huge for getting me into music um he's a really great artist um he has a really good sound he was one of the ones that was doing it right that's why he got so popular right but um yeah but um mostly like i think it's like kind of like my own work ethic when i started getting into djing you know i just i wanted to express myself and like critique myself um i grew up skateboarding you know and like when you're skateboarding you're always trying to get better and better and uh yeah i would record my mixes listen back to it and you know see what i could do better and um yeah and then like the more i got into it the more djs i listened to and you know i would i would compare myself to them which can be very uh very um uh, debil not debilitating but very like <laughs> like it can bring you down in a sense it's not good to compare yourself to others but it can also give you a sense of like what you can do better but um yeah the more i got into it i listened to more djs you know i'd, I'd want to be like them and like um yeah yeah so like i got into like you know djs like uh I mean, just throw a name out there, like Ben Clock, Marcel Detman, just some techno DJs, you know, and um, yeah, and I just would want to make my sets good, like, you know, like the, what they were doing, you know, I knew they were, I'll listen to their live sets at clubs, you know, and um, yeah, I'd, I'd want to be like them. And what would you say, like, now that you're kind of doing um, a little bit of like, you know, like what you inspire or, or and influenced by? You know, like what, like what would you say, like about, like you know, pushing forward or um, progressing, um, learning more? Um, is it about like soaking up different kinds of music, or is it kind of also like your journey about, like how how you listen to music? I mean, for DJing, it's literally it's like both of those things. It's 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 very related to both of those things. You know, it's like. I've listened to so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's so much of that. Cause it used to be for me, like wanting to be a good DJ, you know, but like now it's more so just like, you know, you'll see DJs up there and like, you can kind of tell that like they're DJing, you know, like they want to like, 
really mix things up. They want to cut things up and like show off their skills, you know, and like their, you know, their, their ego, whatever. But like, I'm to a point now where like, I just want to listen to good music, you know, I just want to find good music and enjoy it and just like listen to records, you know, that's, that's really what it's come down to for me. Um, I want to uh, say like your favorite movie is uh blade runner, uh, the newer one. Uh, and, and like, I, I want to like say like, were you a fan of like this, uh, new take of like having Ryan Gosling as like this new, new wave um like detective um like what what was your take on um you know like how we got to see ryan gosling in in various kind of roles but then all of a sudden take like on this kind of like weirder weirder one for sure i mean i i hadn't i'm not really big into like pop pop culture or anything so i wasn't really like aware of what ryan gosling is you know prior to the movie I will say, I mean, I ha- I think I had a little bit of a sense of that, of like, you know, oh, Ryan Gosling in this, like, you know, cult movie, like, how is this going to go? But, like, now since watching it and seeing it a few times, you know, he did great. You know, he, he was really good in it. I don't even see how, you know, anyone could have thought of that now because he just, you know he really played that role well. It's like, yeah, I didn't even see him as like anything other than, you know, uh, a blade runner. <laughs> I don't want to like say any spoilers. <laughs> it's, it's true. I, I like after like, like I went to the theater to see it and then like get in the home to watch it with like my family and still like, you know, like I was a big fan of like Ryan Gosling and drive and like those like weirder roles he'd take on. But then this one was like, okay, like you really put it like a whole 360 and, in, in my take. And also it was like whenever maybe Harrison Ford is, gone like you're really laying it down for like being the blade runner yeah see the thing is though is like you know if we're gonna talk about blade runner hopefully whoever has seen it i don't think i'm ruining anything by saying this but like um brian gosling playing that role as the blade runner and being an android he seriously like played the role of an android so well by just being very you know, emotionless, <laughs> you and, know, and, and very... Like, at the right ways, though, but, and, like, at, and like yeah. at the same time, I think like, he was so tactical and so, like, so yeah. well-driven, and also, at the same time, you were able to already be emotionally connected with him because of, like, other roles. But, say, if you never watched a Ryan Gosling film and you watched him in Blade Runner, you would be astonished! Yeah, I know. I mean that, and I was, I basically had never really seen Ryan Gosling or anything. I just was taking him for who he was, but I was astonished. You know, he seriously, like, played the role well. He took on, especially as big of a cult following as that, you know, series is, he really kicked ass. And I want to also... Musicians, um, artists, like... Uh, some of the stuff that's like inspired you from whenever you're younger until now. Sure. Um, so back in the day, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to these artists because they were huge back then for dubstep. Um, like I said, Skrillex, um, Dr. P, um, he's more of a more low key dubstep artist. Um, he had some big stuff. I liked, you know, excision. Uh, and then, Later on, when I got into other stuff, um, it was like techno DJs. Like I said, Marcel Detman, Ben Clock, you know. And then later on, stuff that inspires me, that like back then even uh, really got me into what I'm in now. DJs like Lena Willikins and uh, Ben UFO. <laughs> I could go on, but it's like, you know how hard it is when someone asks you, like, oh, hey, like, what's your favorite music? And then, like, your mind just goes blank, you know? <laughs> right, right. 
Especially, like, I feel like for me when I'm DJing, like, and when I'm finding music to DJ, I just, I go through so much stuff, you know, that, like, especially without having the time to really sit there and like delve myself into it. Like, you know, every week, every other week I have a DJ show and I have two hours of time. I got to fill up. I go on band camp. I find as much music as I can. And then I throw it into a flash drive and then I go back uh, to my life. <laughs> I go back to hanging out with my fiance, you know, like, I have a bunch of, like, if I can name off some favorite record labels I listen to now, it's, like, Kalahari Oyster Cult, Hessel Audio. Um, yeah, yeah, th those are a couple. And then um, what else? There's, like, um, there's a really good, like, some in, like, uh, Berlin. There's um, Trezor. I think they have a record label. And then um, I'm thinking of one. It's escaping me now. Um Oscar Tom, that's a really good uh, German record label. They do like techno and stuff. You want to uh, you want to get hit with uh, one of these really really bad bad questions? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So this is this is one of those ones for for like the deep stoner fans. Okay. <laughs> Are uh, you a fan of sitcoms? Sure. All right. So if you had to be stuck in a sitcom for the rest of your life, which sitcom would you choose? Oh, uh, man. What sitcom? Uh, I mean, obviously, the first one that comes to mind for probably most everybody is like Seinfeld. Whoa. But like, Se yeah, but Seinfeld is kind of like in my perspective, it's kind of like, uh, it's got like a weird, like, um, like a poltergeist, not poltergeist, but it's got like a weird liminal space feeling going on. And for me though, my second choice would probably be like iCarly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I Carly, it's just like some, like for one, you know, like I'm a, I'm a Gen Z. No. Yeah. I'm a Gen Z -er, So it's just like comfortable and like, funny and like happy and innocent so yeah that'll be my answer probably like iCarly I, I uh, grew up also watching iCarly and my perspective of whenever I finally moved to Seattle forever changed <laughs> yeah I mean I, I don't think it <laughs> I don't think it embodies Seattle at all does it well, it allegedly takes place in Seattle, but none of the vibes is actually Seattle at all. And it's just like, it makes me think, like, why did they choose that to then have, like, no real representation of what it's like to live in Seattle? <laughs> yeah, I guess just because uh, it sounds cool. <laughs> Maybe. Like, I don't know what, but yeah, like, it got me there. All right, so here's one of my fa favorite uh, fan questions, okay? Uh, so like your your uh, favorite kind of food, you know? Are you like a big foodie? Um, I'm not really a big foodie. I'm like I like food. Um, I I like uh trying all different types of food. Like I'm not really like it's weird because like I'm the kind of guy where like I'm basic and it's like I will fucking mash on a burger or a Philly cheesesteak. Like I was telling you also the kind of guy where like i'm down to go like get some tapas or go to an italian place you know yeah, i'll try classy. something I've never had before <laughs> yeah yeah I'll try, I'll try some new stuff but honestly i'd always just rather have like a philly cheesesteak <laughs> um have you ever been out to philly no i mean once um i went out for uh you know jack stauber yeah i went yeah, before, um, my fiancé is really into him, and uh, we went out to go see a show of his back in, like, 2019, no, probably, like, 2018. Very, very, I am about to say at the prime time, whenever uh, the really good stuff was out, I couldn't even remember, like, what album came out at that time, but... Um, yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan, like, he's got some really good, intricate music, uh, some kind of, like, poppy-esque uh, tape, you know, the... And, like, the the stuff that he put out on the, the random thing he put out on Adult Swim is, like, really, really cool. Uh, I'm a fan. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, he. That was like before he got like really famous when we saw him. But um, but I think you know he's such an eccentric guy. I can't imagine he changed much even after like the popularity. One of the ones I love to bring up, you know, like I got to see, um, like AV Terror. Whenever like AV Terror like did not even have like a sellout show in Chicago, and then like in in today's world, if he does a show in Chicago, it it's sold out, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like I I can remember the days like whenever it was really really hard to bring up some artist names, like even like I don't know. It took a while for for so many bands just to kind of get into the circuit. It took, um, I don't know, some of the like ones I love to shout out is like LCD Sound System for sure. You know, it's like it, it took uh, even the people of like Cult Records up in New York too, um, just to kind of get some reign of like having some other bands like the Growlers out there. Uh, uh, are you are you a fan of? Um, kind of like what they what they now like to classify as like this psychedelic rock all indie whatever you want to call it i've been so cued into um electronic music for years now that i'm pretty like i'll get like things here and there like stuff you know like that um i listen to uh nts radio um yeah i'm a big they're fan. pretty big yeah, I love them. So like, I'll I'll hear stuff from that uh, radio station, and you know stuff from YSO. But for the most part, when I'm listening to music, it's either chill stuff from NTS Radio or I'm listening to electronic music. So yeah, probably not. <laughs> I definitely all right. I I listen to NTS, but like I also drive a lot too. So like WYSO is is kind of one of my main all all two go tos. And also, so so whenever I I came across you know what what you what you do, I was like word, I don't know because it stands out especially I don't know because a lot of the times you know you get you'll get some new stuff here and there. Yeah, yeah, radio has become really commercial and boring, especially here and like out in like the Midwest. Excluding, you know, like big, WYSO big for cities, sure. you know. Well, exclu yeah. excluding, yeah, independent radio that's able to kind of um, put together, I mean, solid, um, I don't know, solid station uh, per se. Yeah. Um, all right, so here's one of my favorite questions that I love to ask everybody. Um, if an alien walked in uh, your room, wherever you are right now, and said, what would you say to it first? Um, man, like, where are you from? Can you take me there? <laughs> Can you take me there for for sure? <laughs> like, hey, all right, all right, here, here. Take me, take me away from here. <laughs> like, whatever you just did. Um, and also, if if you uh, if a zombie like apocalypse happened today, would you be prepared or would you become a zombie? Um. I'd like to think I was prepared, but ultimately, like, the chances of me actually having, like, like, I don't have a gun, you know, or anything, like, and, like, you know, I, have, I have a baseball bat, you know, I have, like, some crazy sword at home, uh, you know, like, and, like, you know, I grew up on a farm, so I'm a pretty burly dude, you know, I guess, I'd like to, th I'd like to think that I could survive, uh, don't we all? Also, if you yeah. uh, if you could make a magic potion right now, what kind of magic potion would you make? Um, it's like the same kind of question of like if you could have any superpower. I would just want to be able to fly. Because, dude, like, for one, like you know, I love skateboarding. Like, the feeling of being weightless is better than anything even invincibility why not uh, experience zero gravity or like you know be able yeah. to breathe on the moon or something then yeah just being weightless like being able to go wherever you want and just like 
you can get away from all your problems. All you got to do is float up in the air and fly away. Like, flying is, like, my top choice. All right. All right. That's, that's a good choice. All right. What, what kind of flavor of candy do you think should be banned for being too disgusting? Uh, bubble gum. Bubble gum? Do you hate bubble gum? Yeah. Yep. What do you got against bu- you hate you hate chewing gum in general? Oh no, like that like that pink bubblegum flavor. That, that flavor. But even more actually even thinking about it more now, banana flavors are just, just fucking disgusting. Oh, uh, you're gonna really piss off some people. <laughs> I, dude, I mean, my I'm opinion, joking. you know, you you uh like you get one of those like big packs of like popsicles no one's gonna eat the banana ones everyone's gonna eat the cherry ones oh oh that's really funny uh here here's here's a sentimental question what do you say to yourself to help yourself calm down help myself calm down i guess to calm down i always just try to like bring myself to like the present moment and like clear my mind not like whatever i'm thinking about you're never like fuck shit to... motherfucker you goddamn mother goddamn shit shit, shit bitch <laughs> you know what I mean? like you're yeah. not going off yeah like when i'm doing that i just think to myself like yo now and it's not the best way of thinking so i just i just try to clear my mind um who who is your biggest hippie hero it could be like anybody, but anybody that you feel like you know he, he they are hippie and like that like their hero. It's like like any like just like role model like hero type thing. Um. Wait. So wait. Repeat the question. I, I think I, I think I misheard you. Oh, hippie hero. Oh, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, like, like if you're talking about hippies, you know, like the seventies, sixties, like that kind of hippie. I mean, yeah, like. We're, when I first got into smoking weed, it was all about Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so much music from Jimi that is is left unsaid, and also um, there there's also the people that listen to Jimi Hendrix that like know what was said in like simple songs, like you know. There's just so many to name. <laughs> yeah, my favorite song. By him was always Machine Gun. Yeah, Machine Gun is fucking dope. He like, I don't know, just the, his like demeanor in that song, the way he just gets like, I don't know. You can really, cause he, I mean, Jimmy was in the war, you know. Yeah. So I think you can really, you can really hear that in that song. I th- I think the same. Like, there's aspect of like whatever he had to go through in the government, and then also like translated with like working with different bands and racism, and um, segregation. Like, there's so much in that music that was as explosive as that era, and it translates really well from like being, I feel like anxious and also like um, confident and also. Um, you know, trying to experience love. There's, there's so many messages for sure. Right. A lot of vulnerability he put out. Yeah, I will say though. I, I mean, being like 13 years old, I definitely did not get that deep in his music. It was more so just of like, wow, I'm so high right now. This sounds cool. Like I didn't actually, I didn't actually delve into his music. I was 13. (laughs) <laughs> Alright, so I definitely feel the same way Whenever I was younger Like, whenever the first times Like, I took guitar lessons My my guitar teacher was like I'm gonna teach you uh, Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix And I was like Who's Jimi Hendrix? 
And he was literally <laughs> like, you fucking never heard of Jimi Hendrix and you're doing guitar lessons? Like, I'm about to teach you everything I possibly know right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool that he actually talked to you about the artist. My When I got into playing drums, my drum teacher was very, like, um, like, uh, rudi- like, I used the word earlier, like, rudimentary. And, like, he was, like, almost like, uh, I'm going to use the word wrong, but he was military about yeah, it. He okay. was very, like, he was very, like, it's done this way and that's it. He didn't actually let me have fun with it. And, like, that's one of the reasons I probably didn't really get into playing the drums that much. Well, my, uh, one of my later on uh, music teachers was German and uh, also did work at Ohio State University and also was, like, in the marching band of Ohio University who, for some reason, has credibility. I don't know why. Um, but, um, like a lot of the stuff that like he was like hammering on was like knowing how to be in tune with different instruments and then also like incorporating the, uh, circle of fifths of every note. And whenever like, I, and I, I feel you on this one because like whenever it came down to it, it was like, I could never branch out of like learning what material he was teaching if, I, if there was any of that like in that session it was like turned down almost immediately and i was like well i could probably go home and like do this then <laughs> yeah right like it gets to a point where you're like you're not letting me experiment and that's what music is like about is like expressing yourself i know like it's important to know the rules so you can bend them but, like, you're not making this fun. You're making this, like, you're making me anxious because <laughs> I'm, like, trying to perform for you and not myself. Yeah, I, I remember there was some times whenever I had to audition for, like, certain parts whenever we would be in, like, our chairs for, like, certain songs. And I would just be like, I'm going to step to that audition and just, like, maybe go for all B flat and, like, not even change, like, one note whenever he says, like, adjust it and see if I still get the same part because he knows I can play, like, the material whenever it comes down to it. It it blew my mind because I was just like, it's such a, I don't know, a, a shtick. Um, and, and also, there was there's some aspects, too, I want to bring up with, like, like, my piano class, my piano teacher... They would they would nail you know making sure that you knew like how to read music and understand treble and bass clef, but then they would give you two days where you could write your own song and play it for the entire class, everybody. Yeah, that's so important to be able to like be like, hey, this is how music is done, but also this is how you have fun with it, you know. And also, yeah. that's what brings me up to uh, Ableton with you and in, in, uh, doing your own mixes. What what did you start getting into about doing your own mixes that you enjoy? Yeah, that's literally like the next thing I was thinking was like, you know, I, I played the cello, you know, for a while, you know, and then like I got I did the drums. And then after doing that for so long, it was so appealing to me that I was like, oh, this is my own little world where I can do whatever I want. And like, you know, I, um, I was always a big into video games, you know, so I, I had my own computer. So that was really appealing to me too, where I could just sit down and play on my computer for hours. And, um, I really got into like sound design where I could just, sit, yeah, where I could just sit with like a, uh, like a kick drum or a snare and I could just do all this post processing and just sit there for hours, just like tweaking things and like discovering things. And um, that's what really appealed to me about um, about making music on Ableton. It was just being able to sit there by myself for hours. <laughs> yeah. 
the, the essential survival question. If you were stranded on an island and you could be, uh, and you could only take one thing with you, what would you take? If I was stranded on an island and I could only bring one thing, um, oh, well, I guess if I'm if I'm not cheating, the first thing that came to mind was an axe. Hey, what's some weird stuff going on here? Be quiet. I gotta talk to this person. Oh, hey, this. Well, I got a tiny car. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm. I just parallel parked in this tiny ass spot, and someone was giving me props for it. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, as we mentioned, would you would you prefer sativa, indica, or edible? Um, sativa, because like you I've be been productive. smoking weed for. Yeah, I've been smoking weed for a long time. I slowed down a lot now that I have, like, a fiancé and stuff. But, like, for me, I don't want to smoke weed and then just sit down, you know? I want to smoke weed and then get all hyper and do something fun. Go fucking Ollie a stair set. <laughs> yeah, skateboarding definitely makes it essential. Also, all right. Do you have like a favorite board or like a any any kind of favorite memory that you'd like to share? Cause I've I've gone through mine with with skateboarding myself. Yeah, um, I really like um like a Baker. You know, they're obviously like one of the best for skateboarding and uh for like shoes. Uh, you know, once again, like America, those guys are just they're just the best. Keep it electronic. Do you go kind of hard, or like you you ever go ambient and like look for some podcast or something? Um, when I skateboard, I don't really listen to music, mainly because like, you know, when I'm skateboarding and with my friends, and like, I also just like, like when I'm skateboarding, my headphones, my earbuds, they're just gonna fall out of my head. You know, <laughs> I can't keep them on me because I'm just like skating so fast and shit <laughs> word nice that's that's actually really that's going to be very therapeutic because you know you're getting to tap into uh, that whole other element without the headphones i've i've done it both ways and i like whenever i go down to skate parks like i remember like going to like the skate parks in uh, chicago in the summertime um and just like not needing music because like people would just like blast like something through the speaker and you're just like okay like this vibe like is all right like I can kind of get into this and uh, and and do you have like a, like do you ever like grind or do you ever like go for tricks or do you just kind of like a uh, street skate? Um, these days I mostly go to skate parks and on that note I. I actually, I fucking hate that when people play music at the skate park. I, because I don't want to listen to your music. It like, blows my mind when fucking... they do it in, in the city too. Like I, I was down in, yeah. Mi- I was down in Miami, and like me and my friends, we were like skateboarding in this one, and like they, these people were just doing it, was like straight out of their car for these people to the skateboard, and I was like, all right, but at the same time, I don't know if I want to be jamming to Red Hot Chili Peppers this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, turn, turn your shit off, bro. I don't want to listen to that. Like, put your headphones on. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm like a lawful good type person, <laughs> as lame as that sounds. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to make you listen to, like, some obscure, like, weird shit that I like. So don't make me listen to your fucking, like, shit, dude. <laughs> there's, there's some, there's some, I feel like there's some scenes where I feel like it's totally acceptable and totally, like, like down to see, like, who's in your crew. And then also at the same time, I'm like, yeah, the other people that do not fuck with this vibe are like, what the fuck is going on at the skate park today? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, These like, guys are playing Blink-182. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to listen to Blake 182, Five Finger Death Punch, and like Avenged Sevenfold. Like, turn that shit off, bro. 
There's there's been some moments whenever I've gone to the skate park in like uh like in California and I was just like, Okay, I definitely don't mind the playlist just because like the people that are here playing it. But at the same time, like, yeah, everybody could totally be rocking with some headphones. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's just it's just like a it's not considerate type of thing, you know? And in this day and age, all right, all right. So I feel like this is also nice to bring up. Um, have you always been in Dayton, or do you like to travel, or have like a favorite place you've been? Um, so I grew up around Springfield. Um, I grew up in a, yeah, I grew up Springfield, Ohio, in like a little country town outside of Springfield. And then, um, I grew up, yeah, there. And then I moved to Cincinnati. Um, when I was out my own, I've been living in Cincinnati since like 2019. Um, what's up? Oh yeah. That's near Clifton, right? Yeah. Yeah. I lived in Clifton for a little over a year. Um, favorite producers, um, let me think, ah, man, there's just so many to name. I can't even think of any. Um, so I guess like, it's like, it's cheating, but I got to look at my phone. Um, blow on. It's your, no one will probably be understand what I'm saying over, over this call. What's that? Yeah, Blawan makes techno. Um, I really like uh, that intense, like, washing machine type <laughs> techno. And uh, Donato Dazi uh, makes a lot of good stuff. Um, he gets into a lot of different kinds of music. Um, also, I really like the stuff that comes out of Hessel Audio. It's a record label. All the artists on that record label are just really pushing things forward, and they really sound so fresh. But, uh, yeah, like, it's like that same thing again earlier. It's like when someone asks you, like, what your favorite kind of music is, your mind just goes blank because there's just, there's just too much. It's information overload. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't think it really changes anything for, for the most part. I like, because, like, if if an AI, you know, thing, like, makes the next, like, you know, techno thing, like, that's, you know, that's great. But also, like, when I listen to something, I'm not really thinking about where it came from as much. And this is probably going to show, like, my age and kind of, like, how things have changed. But, like, when I listen to something, I'm not really thinking about where it came from i'm thinking about you know what it sounds like and what it made me feel and if someone told me oh that was made by a computer there was no person behind that at all it's just a bunch of sounds coming from an algorithm i would be like cool it sounds awesome i mean i understand like socio like economically how it's like a bad thing but yeah. like at the end of the day, I just want to hear something come out of the speaker that I like, you know, as long as like the money goes to the right person. <laughs> OK, so what I want to bring up is like how we as we musicians want to bitch about like A.I. art, et, et, et cetera. But we never bitched about like a program like GarageBand or Ableton giving you preloaded samples or like. Um, giving you maybe like a AI drum, like you know, way of it playing along with you or whatever. You know what I mean? Nobody was complaining about it whenever it was actually helping them. And then I feel like there's kind of like the flip card of like, oh, it's helping artists do other stuff, or it's helping like companies also do other stuff. 
uh, in other ways, the other stuff is like a serious way of like messing with the yeah, like algorithms and like other companies willing to you know use their technology or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's also at the same way of like not necessarily opening up like a new realm, but like it's kind of like the red pill or the blue pill with like the Matrix. It's like all of the powers like you really want is there on the internet and i think that they make it really obvious in a sarcasm way with using ai with like all these kind of apps that are coming out yeah i feel like when it comes down to it like really like when you like an artist it's not just what you're hearing in the music it's also about like why some people that have all the talent they don't make it because they're not marketable you know they're not likable it's not just about how good you are at something it's about if people like you or not like and like that's the same way like whereas like if an ai is going to make the next track that you know everyone likes you know it doesn't really make a difference because like you know like there's no one behind that like you know, I, I think like, the same thing too because like it would just be like companies behind it that'd be like, oh, we actually have somebody that 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 generated that, then like our company is going to make sure like we lock that down with that like that company that that built that software or, or whatever, just to make sure that I don't know. That's kind of like my perspective on it because like I totally have heard like AI music where I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I get it, but at the same time, I'm like, it is definitely definitely not the same way as like maybe you're making a song when like like people want to talk shit about about this but like dude fl studio even though you're doing most of that by hand a computer generated what most popular sound is going to get completely updated for that software for you to even use that as a sound pack you know like you're still you're still using sounds even if it's individually done by you that's done by a somewhat ai generator that gives you the best version of what that app can be. Yeah, I mean, creating electronic music, the whole idea behind it is that there's a soul behind that, like making, like, the, you know, um, the, like, uh, patterns and stuff. Like, with AI, it's just, it's just, like, there's just, it's just using literally what everybody else before it did ai is just using patterns that it takes from like other music you know and how's that any different from what people are doing you know like you just take the things you learn from other musicians you know and make it into your own you know Did i just think that like it doesn't really change much you know if it's gonna work that's great but also like people are just gonna listen to what they like that's true too. Uh, did you did you look into like the like? Are you a fan of South Park? Any? Yep. Yeah. All right. So did you look into like how they're getting uh like sued right now between like Warner Brothers because like they made some deal or whatever? No, I haven't. I haven't watched South Park in like years. Well, but right, I used to love it. Right now. Well, I feel like like they, I feel like they, their newer seasons have not disappointed as far as like keeping it real to like their bad jokes and like, um, you know, kind of giving stuff metaphors and like random, you know, random stuff. But like, I feel like amongst this whole kind of thing, it's like everybody in some aspect is willing to put money into something, even though that they're not exactly sure about like what is giving him what is what like what they're like what they're buying you know and and this is one of the really big things that i feel like that south park has been like evident about since like the beginning of this new season um which is really really funny <laughs> because I, I i don't know it's like a, since the pandemic it's it's kind of like on the same thing with like not only with like music and acts because like a lot of places are doing the revival of having you know new places to play at um but it's like the uh, consistency with like how many different 
um, you know, people are willing to come out and uh, give it a shot uh, since then. Yeah, I mean, with South Park, I mean, they're just always going to keep it real no matter what. That's just their whole, that's their whole brand. <laughs> That's that's exactly what that's exactly what I mean. So it's just like, even since the pandemic, and you kind of see it's like effect maybe even on them, and totally see that like on society as far as like how how it like operates between you know service to service and um, you know like function to function for sure. Uh, it's the same thing I feel like with the. With um, there's still kind of like some avenues you have to take to still, um, you know, keep it going, uh, since like, I don't know, the pandemic happened. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the great things about the radio show I have now is like, you know, since I couldn't really go out to shows as much, especially even after things got lax, you know, me and my fiance were trying to keep it low key to not get COVID. Um, the radio show was a really great way for me to keep exploring music and uh, keep it safe. Also, are you a fan of like you know are 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 you a fan of like the Shrek and like um like you know the DreamWorks kind of films like you watch the Puss in Boots? Oh, I haven't seen any of the new stuff, but um, but yeah, sure. Right, so, I want I want to get into it because. Do you think that in today's world, if they revive Shrek, that it would be like perceived the same way as like big as it was whenever like maybe we were younger? Nah, I think it's too washed out now. Right, what do you what, what what do you think is like the better way to invent maybe like the way of bringing together people that like maybe see each other in a different light? I mean, I mean, maybe there's a more like uh, generic answer, and maybe a more like uh, form-fitting answer. But for me personally, skateboarding is just the best way to bring people of all different types of ages and backgrounds together. That's a good point. I was going to say, like, if you were going to like make like your own like cartoon or animated movie short or whatever. Oh, how would I how would yeah. I bring together a bunch of different types of backgrounds? Yeah, like what what would be your pitch on that? If I were to like make an animated movie, yeah. um, I mean, no, I just I have it on the mind. A dystopian thing is always a good way to do that because against all odds, everyone has to fight for the same thing, which is just survival, right? <laughs> those are those are the good primal movies to me. It's like I'm a I'm a big fan of like Liam Neeson. Like Liam Neeson has taken on so many good products where I'm like when I put that I'm like, yeah, you would totally do like what you need to do to fight a wolf if you were stranded out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean at the end of the day, you know, you may be rich and he may be poor, but everyone just wants to fucking go home and eat a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. So we'll, 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 we'll talk a little bit about the dichotomy. All right. Uh, how do you feel about, you know, in today's world? Like, are you a fan of like the college debt thing being like relieved by people that are, uh, uh, you know, able to get that or, how do you feel about that college debt thing? Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm not so concerned. I, I understand the whole conservative perspective of like those people already paid for their uh, debt. So why should these people like get it relieved? I mean, I get that. But like the whole like system is so fucking broken and it's all just perpetuated by people who want to make more money so i'm all for giving people debt relief um but i will say personally i put off college because i was always so scared of taking on student loans so like yeah i don't know that's that's my perspective 
Right, like in in me, like I I went to school uh for political science, and to me it's like yeah, like whenever COVID happened and they kept on postponing whenever you have to pay and you don't have to like pay uh you know at all because it's not gonna like affect you, and like I was just like all for that, and then you know whenever it came about about like maybe college debt is gonna get relief for you, I was like okay, like obviously that's a benefit for me since I like I you know, can't participate, but at the same time, I see all sides, too, and especially for people um, that, you know, maybe weren't privileged, that had to work really hard to get that money to allow their other people to go to college, and then all of a sudden, this happened, and they were like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah, but at the end of the day, it's not just about, like, oh, yeah, it sucks for them. What it is, it sucks for everybody because, like, back in the day, back in the day, you could have a normal job and you could pay it off normally. But now everything's so inflated that student loans are, like, you know, the fucking worst. Buying a house is unimaginable. It's it's the system that's broken. I feel like that's what makes buying a house unimaginable because you were once upon a time able to actually, yeah, work a job where it wasn't as maybe extensive as working three or four jobs in some other cities, you know, just to pay everything that you need to pay for. Uh, and that's that's uh, I just wanted to tap a little bit on that because I think it is kind of essential to uh, maybe even like all people um as far as like trying to find a way um you know to make things a little bit easier uh, especially whenever it comes to like education and i feel like healthcare. i i feel like ties into that i feel like equal equal benefits maybe like from the, from the very beginning should have happened but it just hasn't happened yet yeah right it's like you know, there are these issues that we're dealing with now, but if they had just been like, you know, not for Reaganomics and inflation, you know, we wouldn't have to have be having these conversations. <laughs> exactly. That's that's definitely a really good point. And all right, so I'm a, I want to bring up a really funny one. Um, do you believe in a, like the 50 foot long snake that's been like appearing about online? Have you have you seen any, seen anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, they're saying like there, there's this snake like in this Congo island or in Africa or something, but that that was 50 foot long, and they were like, well, there hasn't been anything that's like 50 foot long, um, since like 1959 or some shit, and like, I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on if we have a 50 foot long snake out in the desert? Like, what, what was, what was it eating? What was it doing all throughout this time? Like. How was it living? How was it harvesting? Was it eating entire villages and it not being reported? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it now, and you're right. There's a sighting from 1959 um, stating the snake rose up 10 feet to attack the helicopter. And like, what the fuck? Can you imagine just just driving, like, riding your helicopter in the sky, and then all of a sudden, like, that's a 50-foot snake. Oh, shit, we, we're pretty low, and we might actually get struck by it. <laughs> what the fuck? But, but there yeah, is, a like, python. A, yeah, what? like, there's, there is, like, a random one that's, like, been floating around that looks, uh, definitely looks fake, but I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like, if there's actually, like, a 50-foot-long snake out there in, in the water, like that's the ultimate right. an, that's the ultimate animated movie right there of like it, it being a baby right. and then it growing up for like hundreds of years of, of survival to be like 50 foot long <laughs> snake yeah see people people are saying that like this was back in the 50s you know he probably estimated that it was way bigger than it really was but i mean like that's the thing about what's crazy about the earth man it's like even the ocean, like, we haven't experimented, like, explored, like, the whole thing, you know? There's all types of animals and stuff out there that we don't even know anything about. Uh, yeah, like, one of these crazy stories I was talking to this lady about um, that um, I work with. She fishes a lot. <clears throat> she goes out fishing a lot. 
And she said every time that um like her her uh, her son goes out on the fishing boat and uh, uses the lantern, f- uh large um water snakes get up inside of the fishing boat just to like uh, get get close to that light, and they're like fucking humongous, like ready to like attack vicious like water snakes to just like hop into your boat. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, and you're scared and you don't know what's going on. You're definitely going to say it was like a monster or some 50 foot long thing. Yeah. Or like if you're drunk and you're just out there fishing at night and not expecting like a bunch of water snakes to come into your boat at night because you have some light. Like I would be tripping out. (laughs) I would I'd probably be the one to get bitten, to be honest. Uh, all right, man. It is. I gotta go inside here soon, man. Uh, all right. You think we're good to wrap it up? All right, all right. So, so right, right before we go, you have to uh, shout out some of the songs right on top of your head that you'd like to share. Um. So the first one that comes to mind is uh, Ben Clock Sub Zero. That's a really big. Yeah, that's a really big techno song. Um, our song. You know, and like it's not just about DJing for me. A song I've been listening to a lot that I like is called "I Troll the Megahertz" by Prefab Sprout. Um, it's got a really nice, uh, like, um, like poetry type thing from like a female vocal going on, talking about death and stuff. I really like that one. Uh, what else? Um, so. The first song that actually got me in to techno is um, called Planet E, and that's a remix by Dense and Pika. And uh, that song is just, it's really heavy, intense techno, just like where the kick drum is so heavy and gnarly, and it's very intense. Um, and then, like, uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything else more techno. Um, something else I've been listening to a lot is uh, "Watching You Without Me" by Kate Bush. Uh, I like I like that one. Yeah, that one that one's really nice. Uh, I like female vocals. Um, I like uh, "Beach House." I like uh, um, I like "Walk in the Park" by Beach House. That's always been a really big song for me. And then. Um, yeah, Beach House is amazing. But then, um, this song is uh, another song I've discovered through NTS. It's called Des Cocotiers by Hector Zhao. Um, Hector Zhao, I think. But um, that song is just helping me rediscover like uh, modern classical. And, um, and then, like, one more would be, like, Vaporware 01 by Donato Dazi. It's a nice ambient track. All right. Well, thank you for joining Vibe Osmosis. I do appreciate you taking this time. And go ahead and shout out exactly your name and what you do and also what, you, what you're going to be getting up to. Sure. Um. Yeah, so um, my name is Barry Leonard, and um, I'm a DJ at 91.3 WYSO in Yellow Springs. Every Friday night, 10 p.m. to midnight, uh, we DJ electronic music, getting into some house and techno. Uh, This Friday night, actually, uh, let's see, it'll be March uh, 31st. I'll be getting into some stuff. Um, It'll be me DJing. And then, you know, uh, let's see, March 21st, no, April 21st, I got a DJ coming on from Columbus. That'll be a good show. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's been fun, man.